and welcome to Department Profiles. I'm Mark Crosby. I want to thank you for joining me here at the Quincy Access Television Studios. Department Profiles is exactly what it sounds like. We look at departments and uh, we kind of go in depth. And that's what we're going to do with the Quincy Health Department today. And joining me is the Commissioner of Public Health here in the city of Quincy, Marley Castley. Welcome back. Thank you, Mark. It's a pleasure to be back here. It's a pleasure to have you in. Uh, we should mention that the Health Department does a lot of programming with Quincy Access Television and a lot of programming throughout the city. Yes, we, we've done quite a lot. Uh, we've expanded our uh, TV shows here with QA TV. I think we're doing three shows now, uh, which is incredible, uh, and it's very helpful for the public. We should mention that um, those who benefit are not only the citizens of Quincy, but uh, we are actually playing some of these programs, or I should mention centers are playing these programs beyond the city. So if you live out in California, for example, you will see um, Caitlin Pico. She, of course, is a health nurse in your department. Mm -hmm. Folks will see her out in California. Yeah, which is, which is incredible. And, you know, QATV and everything that you do and John does here and your whole staff, you know, they do a great job. And I, I think you just told me before we aired that we're also in Wisconsin, which is, which is incredible. Right, right. Well, a lot of what um, we talk about does, I guess, transcend geographic areas. So certainly if we can get the information out beyond uh, this area, if it uh, is playable, I suppose, in those areas, why not share it? Exactly. Today, however, we will be concentrating on the Quincy Health Department. And uh, I guess what, um, what has been going on there, maybe some plans for the future, I think we're going to start with the partnerships. Yes, we, we've created a lot of partnerships, um, you know, due to COVID, uh, a lot of the programs um, faded out and we had to cancel many of the programs. So it was very difficult in the beginning when uh, I was appointed by the mayor in May of 2021 uh, to get our partnerships back and offer as much as we can to the city and to the community, different parts of the community especially. And so we've partnered with Dana-Farber where we're doing skin cancer screenings. Mammography van is coming down to the Kennedy Center. Uh, blood drives, uh, which is very important because there's a need for blood uh, through the Dana-Farber. Um, we also have partnerships with Tufts Medical where we have expanded our programs uh, with the nurse coordinator there, Deb, uh, Debbie Toomey. Uh, she does a phenomenal job and we continue to expand programs through her and also working with Manit uh, Health Center and Walgreens and uh, offering COVID-19 vaccines as well. You just did mention some of those partnerships and I do want to highlight them because you highlight them in your newsletter. And uh, folks do have access. It's uh, usually a multi-page newsletter. It can be found on the City of Quincy Health Department website. So I'm gonna hold this up for folks. And this, the upcoming events uh, which feature a lot of the partners that you had just mentioned are uh, certainly viewable with descriptions on that particular page. But uh, talk about um, how folks, again, can access this on the City of Quincy Health Department site. Yeah, so if you have access to uh, internet, you can go on to quincyma.gov and under the Departments tab, you can uh, click Health Department. And there are tabs at the top, which are uh, 2023 events that we have throughout this whole year uh, that highlight some of our partnerships as well. And we also have a tab that says the monthly newsletter, uh, which we've been doing for about six or so months now, um, really to try and engage with, with the community and let them know what's going on uh, in terms of what's uh, happening at the health department. This uh, season has been a tough season. We not only have, or you not only have been dealing with COVID, you have been dealing with RSV, cases of RSV, and the flu. Yes, and we, we've been dealing with um, COVID uh, in terms of test kits and in terms of distributing masks as much as possible to the community and those who want them. Um, and also our flu program, which we started uh, this fall and winter uh, for the first time in 10 years, which was a very big success, which we will be expanding in 2023. So there are no flu clinics per se, but for homebound folks, if we're looking forward to the fall, folks can sign up? Correct. Folks can sign up for the upcoming 
2023 fall uh, flu program. Um, this was our first time offering this program uh, in 10 years uh, to the city of Quincy. Uh, and it's very important to me because a lot of the homebound residents uh, don't have the access or the transportation to attend a flu clinic or make it to their local CVS. And so what we, this program offers is our three nurses will come out to uh, your unit and offer the uh, flu vaccine uh, free of charge as long as they have an insurance uh, card with them. And talk about um, the test kits, the COVID test kits mm -hmm. and masks. You mentioned those. So if folks are in need, uh, you do have some on hand? Yes, we have plenty on, on hand. Um, to date, we've given out uh, roughly around 86,000 test kits um, throughout the whole entire 2022. Uh, we have new test kits available to the public uh, with expiration dates of August 2023. Uh, if you scan the QR code on the top of the test kit, uh, there's a possibility that they could be extended until the end of 2023 as well. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because folks may have some at home and not realize that they are now past the expiration date. Correct. The FDA did not approve uh, the recent test kits that have gone out with the expiration of January. Uh, those are no longer valid. Um, and so folks might want to come to our office and pick up a few of the new test kits that expire later this year. Um, we also have plenty of masks available, um, available to the public. You mentioned your office, so let's go over logistics, of where you are located, and also talk about um, the hours that the health department is open. Yeah, we are located at 440 East Squanum Street, known as the Kennedy Center. We are open Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 8.30 to 4.30 p.m., and Thursday, we are open 8.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. and Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And before we leave COVID completely, uh, you and I were chatting prior to uh, beginning to record this program, and it really seems like COVID is with us for the long haul, almost yeah. like a seasonal flu. Although with the flu, you get it, uh, there's a seasonal aspect to it. Uh, COVID, I guess, doesn't really have that. Yeah, and there, there are um, ongoing conversations with the FDA and the CDC in terms of what's next, in terms of uh, vaccine. Um, and so, you know, from what I'm hearing is that there will be a yearly booster available just as the flu shot is available as well. When you were talking about um, partnerships and I guess the visibility of the health department, the Quincy Health Department throughout the community. You had mentioned, I believe, uh, the partnerships you have with the Council on Aging. Uh, Deb Deary, who is a health nurse with the health department, does do a monthly program, mm -hmm. and we actually record <coughs> it as well, but she presents to the seniors in Quincy. Yes, we have uh, great programs offered to the uh, seniors at the Kennedy Center. Uh, the first one is with Deb Deary. Uh, she offers a health topic of the month and presents it to the seniors and her classes have been phenomenal and the seniors really enjoy it. We also have another show called Health Links with Tufts Medical, uh, Debbie Toomey. And uh, she does a phenomenal job as well and the seniors really enjoy that because she offers a, a variety of public health topics and resources uh, that the community uh, could use. And of course, uh, Caitlin Pico joins me here in studio for For Your Health, and that's also monthly. So certainly, uh, it seems like the health department is getting the information out there. Online payment access. Yes, so that was um, one of my goals for 2022 and 2023. and. Um, I think the last time I was on this show, we were looking at how to make it easier for business owners and um, landlords uh, so that they can have easier access to our applications uh, and to payments as well. Uh, the prior system was uh, a little bit outdated. Um, you know, they would mail in a check or they would come into the front desk during their busy days and busy times. And, um, you know, having this online access uh, to to provide a payment has been uh, very successful. 
Um, I would say 50% of our clientele now refers to online. Um, and our applications are also going to be online as well. Um, we are working with a great software company to make this happen. And those online applications looking toward the summer? Yeah, so I, I think um, the online applications will become available in the summer, which is the perfect timing during relicensing period for our restaurants, uh, as well as other services that we pr provide. I guess keeping in the digital realm, talk about inspections, they have gone digital. Yes, they, they've gone digital and our staff was very accommodating to adapting to a new system. It's very hard to do when, um, you know, the past 15 years we've been doing it on hard copy. Uh, with our new system we're doing the inspection right on the iPad and we're able to email their inspection right to that landlord's email or to that business owner's email and they have a copy. It also helps on our end with uh, filing. So instead of filing the paperwork in the drawers, we're now able to uh, save it in our own database and have it uh, more secured. I guess, and that just brings up uh, maybe a thought on what the health department does or some of the tasks that they are involved in. And of course, both home inspections, but business inspections as well. Yes, we do housing inspections, nuisance complaints from uh, the public, uh, restaurant inspections as well. We also, and, and the public might not know it, but we also uh, inspect body art facilities, tanning facilities, the hotels, the motels. Talk about, um, and I know you and I will uh, hopefully in the, in the future get into doing a specific program about inspections, uh, maybe uh, rodent inspections. Uh, I guess in light of that, or just um, a nod to that, any suggestions for homeowners? Uh, rats and mice love to come in when it gets cold. So how can maybe a homeowner, a business, not attract these critters in the first place? Our, our businesses do a great job um, throughout the whole city. They're required to have a pest control company uh, inside and outside as well. Uh, but for homeowners, that's uh, the tricky part. Um, you know, being able to identify uh, a rodent burrow um, and what the first signs are. Um, the initial signs which any homeowner should take is to clean up their property if they have any uh, harborage, any uh, debris that rodents could be um, going to or attracted to. Um, and then secondly, if you have any bird feeders, bird feeders, believe it or not, do attract um, rodents because it is a food source. Um, and as well as if you're growing a garden. If you're growing a garden, those will attract rodents as well. So we have a rodent control budget and we have our inspectors that will go out to attend these complaints. Um, and we work with two wonderful pest control companies. Uh, the first one's Ladybug Pest Control and the second one is Clancy Brothers Pest Control as well. So if a homeowner notices what they think is a burrow, could they call? Yes, they could call our office. Our office is uh, 617. 376-1275 and they can uh, file a complaint and our inspectors will be out there either the same day or the next day to address uh, your concerns. When you mentioned bird feeders, I have a story for you. <laughs> I have a, a window well and I, I guess it's far enough. I thought it was far enough away from my bird feeder, but evidently it wasn't and it was attracting not only birds. The bird feeder was not only attracting birds, it was attracting skunks and uh, raccoons so a skunk had fallen into the window well and then couldn't get out. What we've seen is a lot of complaints uh, in the residential areas uh, simply because when we were under COVID-19 lockdowns and the whole world shut down um, the rodents weren't going to the dumpsters of a restaurant uh, they were going they're starting to go to the bird feeders or uh, you know properties that have harbridge and um, gardens that will attract these rodents. One of the things you and I discussed was access to the health department's website and various tabs on there. We mentioned a tab where folks can view the current newsletter and once again this comes out monthly uh, but there's also a tab on there for folks to find out what's coming up at the health department. Yes, there's a tab uh, also on the Quincy Health Department page uh, under 2023 events and we highlight um, 
programs with Dana Farber, which the skin cancer screening program has, I, I believe, has seen over 350 uh, individuals since our partnership in September of 2021. Our mammography van was a big success. Uh, this year we had about uh, 47 signups out of uh, 50 that was required by Dana-Farber. Um, we also had 190 blood donations at a time when blood is needed uh, for transfusions and other medical reasons as well through Dana-Farber. Um, so all of our programs are very important and uh, they're a good cause and you know, I hope more of the public uh, calls our office to sign up for upcoming programs and attend our various public health topics. So in addition to what programs are coming up, uh, folks can access again in that newsletter, but they'll also find out numbers, how many uh, COVID infections are in the city at any given time. That's correct. The monthly newsletter does a great job uh, of highlighting either programs or where we are with COVID uh, at that month. Um, you know, you, you can see in our newsletter, it'll show uh, the data for week to week uh, COVID infections, which is uh, taken from PCR uh, testing only. It does not include uh, at home tests. So we have added on our newsletter, uh, the wastewater levels that the uh, state suggests to monitor for COVID levels. Um, the wastewater um, will highlight where we are with COVID a little bit better than what our numbers are. We should also mention in season, the health department does sample the beach water throughout the city. Correct, we do sample the beach waters. We have uh, 13 beautiful beaches here uh, throughout the city of Quincy. And if residents are uh, attending that particular beach, they can access our website and see what the bacteria levels are. Um, if they are high, you will notice a beach closure or a beach uh, resampling test on there. And we also put a lot of our programs and our results from either beaches, COVID data, or um, other things that we do on our Facebook page as well, which is under the City of Quincy Health Department. I'm glad you mentioned Facebook because uh, folks, do use that quite a bit. I'm, I'm told that it's the older folks like myself that uh, tend to be on Facebook. Uh, but um, needless to say, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what the younger uh, kids get into. I think TikTok is probably <laughs> one of them, but that might be old news now. Uh, Facebook is, is certainly a great way to uh, spread the word in addition to the City of Quincy website. Yeah, we, we try to provide as much as possible to the public uh, in different parts of the community. Quincy's so big. There's 101,000 uh, plus uh, residents here. Uh, and we try to you know, reach out to House Neck, Squanum, West Quincy, Quincy Point, uh, North Quincy. Um, and we, we try to provide as much as possible to the different parts so that they know what programs, what services are coming to the city of Quincy and where they can find them um, and, what, and what they can do uh, as well. Uh, talk about this just came to mind, plastic bags and the use of plastic bags and the health department's role in that. Yes, plastic bags were, believe it or not, banned in the city of Quincy uh, just a couple months prior to COVID-19 uh, in March of 2020. And it went back into effect uh, in April of 2022. And our department enforced that throughout the city. Uh, we handle any complaints of any uh, establishments that are still um, using the wrong bags, uh, but we make sure that all the restaurants and all the supermarkets are using uh, the correct bags, uh, more environmental friendly. Very good. I guess on that note, um, I think we'll close this particular program. Thank you for joining me and certainly welcome you back on um, a, I would suppose, quarterly basis possibly just to kind of uh, give us the update on what's happening in your department. Yeah, I think that would be great. And, you know, we can highlight some of the programs that uh, the health department is offering and let the public know, you know, how they can sign up and, and where to find it. I think that's very important uh, to get the news out there. One other area, and uh, I guess we'll close on this, uh, is Quincy Access Television, not only programs like this, but our message board is also accessible. Uh, that is on when um, 
programming like this is not on. So we have a 24 seven day a week uh, channel uh, or our channels. We have a 24 seven company. We have our channel eight in the city, channel nine and our HD channel, which is 1072. So in addition to programs, our message board certainly utilize QATV for all that uh, information. So Marley, I want to thank you for joining me here today and informing the residents about uh, new happenings at the health department and maybe refreshing uh, some of those uh, folks with what the health department does because I think one of the things you came in here with was you'll get approached and people won't know that the health department does that or is involved in that. So this was a perfect opportunity to, I guess, make folks aware. Exactly, and thank you very much for having me. I, I really appreciate it. It's always a pleasure to be here at QATV. Um, and again, to highlight some of the things that the health department does which you know some residents may not know, um, and they can call our department and have those services. Very good. Well, until next time, thank you, Marley, for joining me. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And thank you at home for watching. Please continue to watch Quincy Access Television for more locally produced programming.